What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today I'm gonna to be showing you 18 more iPhone tricks that you might not know existed. And if you guys are new here, I make one of these videos every single quarter. So you can find the previous episodes linked down in the description below. And if you want to be the first one to see the next episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button. All right, so let's not waste any time at all. Let's go ahead and get straight into these tricks. And the first one has to do with Safari. So if you guys are anything like me, you like opening up links in new tabs. So for example, if I'm on Safari and I just searched for something and I see there are multiple new news articles on it right here, and I want to open up a couple of them, but I want to do it in a new tab. If you do that, of course you have to press and do open a new tab, but it takes you to that website. Then you have to go into your windows and then back to this and then find a new one and then haptic press open a new tab again. And I don't like how it just goes to that website that I just opened, you know, in a new tab right away. I wish it would just stay on here and I can open those in the background. Well, you actually can. So if we go into our settings here and then go down to Safari and then down to open links, change this to in background. And now when you do that, if we go in haptic press right here, open in background and you can see it stays on this page and that tab just opens up in the background while we remain on the page we were just on. So this is something that is extremely useful for me inside of Safari, and I figured you guys would find use in that as well. And to expand on this feature, there's actually a quicker gesture in iOS to open up a link in a new tab. So instead of having to haptic press and then pressing on open in background or open new tab, you can actually just simply tap with two fingers on that link to open it in a new tab. It's really that simple. I don't know how I didn't know this for the longest time. So if you just two press, just two fingers press on this link right there. It doesn't do anything, but you can see that it actually opens it up in a new tab right here. You don't even have to zoom in. Sometimes you will have to zoom in, but most of the time you don't. So you can see there's a link right here. I could just simply tap with two fingers at the same time and it opens it up in a new tab. So it didn't do it right there. So there we go. And you can see it opens it up in a new tab right there, just with a simple two finger gesture tap. And if we go into that tab that we just opened and we go back, you can see that Safari automatically closes out of that tab because it takes us back to where we just were. So it works anywhere like on you know Safari, for example, if I just open this in the background and then I go to the tab that it just opened right here, then I go back, you can see that Safari automatically closes that tab. That way we don't have you know the same site pulled up in two different tabs did you know that you can use siri to turn off your alarm or snooze your alarm in the morning yes this is actually something i just recently did i was just feeling lazy i didn't feel like opening my eyes or getting up to turn my you know alarm off and i didn't realize until i said it that you could actually ask siri to turn your alarm off for you all you have to do is say hey siri turn off alarm or hey siri snooze and it will do it hands-free now if you sleep like me with your phone facing downwards then you will need to turn on a feature in here inside of settings if we go into our accessibility right here and then down to siri you will see that always listen for hey siri you guys want to make sure that that is turned on and you can see it says listen for hey siri when your iphone is facing down or covered so that's something to keep in mind that you want to have enabled but i did just recently realize that you could ask siri to turn off your alarm for you without having to touch it and also to add on to this trick you can also ask siri to calculate a tip for you so i would always do this in the calculator app or with a shortcut but you can actually ask Siri to do it for you. So watch this. How much is a 20% tip on a $68 bill? And you can see Siri shows you exactly the tip amount and the total with the tip on top, and it shows the percentage right there. So that is a much easier way to do it than having to go through a shortcut or to type it in in a calculator or anything like that. So two simple little tricks there that you can use with Siri. And speaking of Siri, did you know that there were two new Siri voices added in a recent update? And you could actually change those and they sound much much more human-like and less robotic than they have in the past. So if you go into your settings and Siri and search, and then to Siri voice, voices two and three are new and they sound a lot more modern and just you know more human-like. So here's voice two. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. And here's voice three. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. So your phone will have to download these, but I would recommend turning those on if you like the sound of those. I personally like these much better than the default, you know, voice one and four that we've had in the past. You could also change the variety up here as well if you want a different accent 
on your Siri speaker. The next trick is going to be a way to check your battery's cycles. So if you're familiar, a battery cycle is basically how many times your battery has been charged, like from zero to 100, and it basically is a good indication as to when you need to change your battery. So this is something that when you're buying a used phone, you will want to know how many cycles you know, have been put on that battery, and for your own battery as well, you might want to know how many cycles have been put on your battery to know when you should get a new battery installed, especially for older devices. But this is actually done via a shortcut so I will have the link to the shortcut called view battery cycle down in the description below but to do this you just need to go into your settings and then let's go back here and down to privacy and then all the way down to analytics and improvements and then analytics data and we want to go down until we see log aggregated so you want to go down to the L's and find the last log aggregated so you can see the date is right there as well you want to go to the last one because that's going to be the most accurate the most up-to-date and you want to tap on that right here and you want to tap on the search up in, or the share button in the top right then you want to go down to view battery cycle and when you tap on that you could see it shows up in a pop-up exactly how many battery cycles you know the count of the battery cycles on your phone so this iphone 12 only has 28 cycles on its battery so it probably will not need a battery change anytime soon but this is awesome because this comes straight from your iphone it doesn't rely on a third party source so it's going to be just as accurate as if you took it to an apple store so this is a really cool shortcut to have on your phone and to check especially if you have an older device another cool little trick is the ability to search for record labels inside of music so you can see here the record label 88 rising you can actually search for select music labels and you could find similar music to artists you like so for example if i listen to this album and i was like wow i really like this sound i want to see you know other songs by maybe the artists that are related to that sound or have a similar sound to that you can see at the bottom of some albums there's this little label right there that says record label and it shows you could tap on that to see their profile right here which shows all the top releases and the latest releases about this specific record label you can even read about them down here so this doesn't work for every single record label but I have found that it works for quite a few and it's a great way to discover new music that's similar to the artists that you're already listening to and that you know you already like. And speaking of music, did you know that there is a way to make your music louder on both your speaker and via your AirPods? So for example, if we go into our music section right here in settings and then go down to EQ, the late night EQ, if you turn that on, that will make the sound on your speakers louder. So I noticed that it increases the max volume on your iPhone. So be careful, just don't blow your speakers, but that is a way, that specific EQ is a way to make your music louder. Now, if you want your music louder for your AirPods or your AirPods Max or any headphones for that matter, if we go into our accessibility settings, so let's go up here to accessibility and then let's go to this right here, audio slash visual, and then to headphone accommodations, turn that on and then you want to go to vocal range right here and turn that to moderate or strong even on slight you will hear a difference but moderate or strong will really improve the quality or increase the volume rather of the music going into your headphones so that is a way to make music louder just sounds overall louder on both the speaker the external speakers of your iphone and also when you have headphones in and you can see you can also change this to just media or phone and media so like phone is going to be you know obviously like phone calls and things like that if you don't want that to be louder you can turn that off and just keep it on media or you know change it to whatever you want and going back into the music application there's one last thing i wanted to show you in here that i've realized not a lot of people really know about or just don't use a lot so if you're in an album or a playlist there's a quick and easy way to add a song to the queue so for example a lot of people just go to this and then play next like that or they tap these three dots and then go to play next to add it to the queue but there's a much easier way and that involves swipe gestures so if i swipe to the right all the way like that you can see it does a play next action you could also swipe over not all the way and you could add this to a play last so you can see the orange one right there it's going to play last on the queue and then also if you swipe over to the left all the way you can see it will either download it or remove it from your library so for example that one wasn't downloaded so it downloaded it and now if i swipe all the way to the right it will delete it and you can see it's gone now so swipe gestures inside the music application just make everything faster and more fluid we also have a few tricks inside of the photos application so for example i have this crazy resvani truck here i took a photo of and if i swipe up you can see we have this section for add a caption and if i go ahead and type in to here resvani you can see like that and tap on done 
Now, later down the road, if I wanted to find this photo, I could just simply search for it. So if we go out of here and then go to search, and if I search for res, Vani, you can see that that photo is the only one that comes up because obviously your phone's not gonna recognize anything with that type of name, but you can see it right there. So that's really useful for finding photos later down the road. Now going back into the album section right here, you can see I have my albums right here. And what if I didn't want like this image or this big face right here showing as the key photo for the album, and I didn't wanna move photos around in there or anything like that? Well, you could actually do that. So for example, if I go into this album right here, and you can see this was actually the key photo for the album because it was the very first one. But if I wanted it to be this picture right here in the middle, I could just go in haptic press on that and you can see we have an option down here for make key photo. And now when you do that and go back, you can see that is now the key photo that shows up and it no longer just reverts to the first photo in that album. Now going into the camera, there's also a little trick here that you know isn't really a trick, but it's just something that a lot of people I've noticed have just forgotten exists. So a lot of people who put filters on their photos, take the photo first, and then go into the photo and add the filters on top of it only to realize that it doesn't look as good with a filter well there's actually a way to add the filters in before you take a photo so if you just swipe up right here you will see we have the filters all the way over here on the right if you tap on that you can see the filter live in the camera view like in the view right here before you take the photo you can see how it would look with one of the filters Put on it so just a really small thing that a lot of people seem to forget is there before you take the photo and also if you wanted to keep that filter on at all times you can go into your camera settings right here and then go to preserve settings and then go to creative controls and make sure that is turned on and now i can close out of the camera application and go back in and you can see that the filter remains on because i have this turned on right here the preserve settings for creative controls the next two tricks are inside of the maps application so the first one of course you guys probably knew that if you double tap it zooms in and if you double tap with two fingers it zooms out like that but did you know that if you double tap and hold you could zoom in just like this on the maps application so this is kind of a little hidden gesture here because you can zoom in a lot more than you could with just you know of course you could do it like that with two fingers as well but if you only have access to one finger you can just take your thumb and zoom in like that and it's very very handy now also inside of the maps application did you know that you can send your eta to somebody automatically when you put in the gps to go to that location so yes you have to have it set as a favorite so you can see here i have this favorite right here if we go to see all right here you can see that we have a little eye next to the favorite and if we tap on that you can see if we go down there is share eta right here so if you add a person it says automatically notify another person every time you navigate to this favorite your location route and eta will be viewable until you arrive so normally you would have to do that manually you'd have to press a button but if you have it set as a favorite and you have this option set here inside of the settings for this favorite it will do it automatically every time you are on the way to that person's house or to work whatever the case may be so pretty nifty little trick there inside of maps now going back into safari we have even more tricks to share here so if you hold down on the open new tab button right here you can see that this allows you to close all tabs at one time if you wanted to and then also if we go to the tabs right here and then tap and hold on the plus you can see it pulls up recently closed tabs so this will show all the tabs that you just recently closed also in safari you can take a screenshot of the entire web page so once you take a screenshot you can see you have the option for full page and you can see it takes a screenshot of the entire page right there now if you don't want to send the whole page you just want to send some of it you could tap on the crop button right there and you can crop this to save just a certain section of that web page but maybe just something bigger than if you just took a regular screenshot and then tap on done and then of course you can save it you can mark it up if you want to and it will save as a pdf file now another little trick with text that i use a lot in emails and in notes especially but you could do this anywhere where you use text there are actually some gestures where you can copy paste and undo and redo very easily so for example if i wanted to copy this right here i could take my three fingers and pinch inward and you can see up top it shows copy if i pinch outward with those three fingers it says paste so also if we go ahead and let's just delete some of this and do three finger tap so just a double tap with three fingers you can see it says undo if i three finger tap again it brings up this and i can press on this little arrow right here to redo what i just undid and also another way to undo and redo is by shaking your device just like that it says undo typing you can tap on undo and if you shake it again 
you can see it will redo. And then speaking of text, there's also a really easy way to enter your email address with a specific string of letters or words or just one word. So for example, if we go into our settings and then go to general and then to keyboard and then to text replacement, you can see we can add in text replacement right here. So for example, if I wanted to have a shortcut just to say like my email, if I just want to type in email to type in my full email address instead of typing in the full thing, like for example, if I had this email at gmail.com, that was the phrase or I guess fmail.com in this example, but you can see the shortcut is email. So now if we save that, and I just type in email. So for example, if I go into this right here and I just type in email, you can see that it pulls up that text replacement right there. If I just tap on space, it puts that in automatically. So if you have like, you know, I wouldn't recommend this for a password, but for example, if you have like an email that you use a lot that you are tired of copying and pasting, or you're just tired of entering in all the time, you can set up text replacements to have those in there. So that is a really useful feature here in iOS as well. And then the final trick I wanted to show you guys is a way to have different languages set up for different applications. So if you are bilingual and you speak multiple languages, you can have different languages appear in different applications. Like for example, if we go down to our settings and go to, let's just say that we want, I don't know, let's just say we want Facebook to be in Spanish, but everything else to be in English, we can do that. So you can see in Facebook settings, it shows preferred language. And if you tap on that, you could change it to whatever language you have added in here. So like, for example, if I set it to Espanol, that means that when I went into Facebook and only Facebook, the language would change. So this is very useful if you are bilingual and you speak multiple languages. But anyways, guys, there you have it. Those are 18 more iPhone tricks that you did not know existed. If you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. It's going to be a good one because it's probably going to be when iOS 15 is out to the public. So there are going to be a lot of hidden features to show you guys in that video. So make sure you hit that button down below. It is free and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click that bell as well. So you get notified when a new video goes live. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.